Hello, today I will be talking about malnutrition in children with chronic disease. In my talk, I will be focusing on two common disease processes, cystic fibrosis or CF and renal disease. These are my disclosures. I will not be referring to any commercial products in my talk. Before we consider malnutrition in these two disease states, it is important to consider what malnutrition does to children overall. As depicted on this slide, it can create poorer short-term outcomes, particularly in hospitalized children, but can lead to significantly poorer outcomes for the individual child in the long term. What is more important is the intersection between chronic disease and nutritional status. Often, nutrition needs change in children with chronic disease such that they have increased energy requirements and may have problems with malabsorption or other energy losses. Our ability to diagnose malnutrition using standard anthropometric measurements may be made more difficult due to the presence of edema or because of other difficulties with accurate measurement. Finally, while these children may need increased provision of energy and other nutrients, it may be more difficult to provide it to them because of their underlying disease state. In the first condition that I will discuss today, CF, the rate of malnutrition is approximately 10%. Risk factors for malnutrition include increased resting energy expenditure and a variety of CF-specific concerns such as pancreatic insufficiency and CF-related diabetes, but also decreased appetite and feeding problems. The Cystic Fibrosis Foundation recommends that children with CF maintain a weight for length or BMI greater than the 50th percentile for optimal long-term outcomes. While clinically, an index of body proportionality such as weight for length or BMI is commonly used, children with CF can have a low fat-free mass despite appearing well-nourished. However, at this point in time, standard anthropometric measurements are what are recommended in CF. Other measurement methods that can be used are bioelectrical impedance or air displacement measurement of body composition or DEXA scans. Children with CF require 110 to 200% of the RDA energy for age and fat should not be restricted in these children. 85% of children will require pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy as they will be pancreas insufficient. Salt supplementation is vital in children as children with CF lose salt in their sweat and other secretions. CF specific multivitamin supplementation is recommended and when children with CF remain malnourished despite other interventions, early gastrostomy tube feeding should be considered. Now moving on to renal disease. The rate of malnutrition can vary widely from 6 to 65 percent depending on the type and severity of the renal disease. Risk factors for malnutrition include decreased oral intake but also renal disease specific concerns such as increased nutrient losses with dialysis and alterations in the growth hormone insulin-like growth factor axis. It is important to remember that weight and serum albumin are inaccurate in renal disease and unreliable due to likely water retention. That being said, the recommended anthropometric measurements are dry weight, height and either BMI or weight for length. It is recommended that dietary intake be assessed either through a 24-hour recall or a 3-day food diary. For children on hemodialysis, the normalized protein catabolic rate should be calculated. A variety of other measurements as depicted on this slide can be used to assess nutritional status in renal disease. Children with renal disease need extra protein. The amount is dependent on whether the child is on dialysis and the actual dialysis method. They also need water-soluble vitamins and vitamin D supplementation. Since hyperphosphatemia is a concern, they need interventions to prevent it, such as limiting phosphorus intake and usage of phosphate binders. Early nutrition therapy should be considered when malnutrition is not responsive to simple interventions. 
To summarize my talk, many factors contribute to altered nutritional requirements in children with chronic disease, such as changes in energy needs, poor tolerance of enteral intake, and coexistent malabsorption. Standard anthropometric measurements may not accurately reflect nutritional status in chronic disease. Finally, improved nutritional status frequently correlates with improved outcomes in these children. Thank you.